Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. Well, we both just had a great fun time this weekend. I know I had a good time, but what the hell did you do? Well, I went with Alyssa and her friend, who I won't name because I don't really have her permission to name her, but Alyssa and her friend, and we went to see Coin at the Will Turn. Now, we had these tickets prior to the pandemic even being a thing. Wow. That's, and then... They reset the date, and then it got postponed again because of the pandemic. So Double wow. It was pretty crazy. And, you know, unless I wanted to be down close, so without us even knowing, we get there, we think it's an hour and a half early, and it's really two and a half early. <laughs> but that's okay because within, like, 20 minutes of us being there, they go through with these wristbands, The first 250 people have access to the pit. Everyone else does not. And the reason for that is obviously so you're not like crammed in there. Like there was plenty of space. People were not like rubbing up against each other. Unless they wanted to, of course. They didn't rub against each other unless they wanted to, of course. Uh huh. Ba dum Yes, that was a joke. Thank you. But we had a really good time. We had a really good time. I I have like these mixed emotions about this opening band because I have now listened to them on recording and and I I hear a different band. Are they so just I'm garbage thinking live? that maybe what the problem is is that they're just not very good live. You'll have to tell Mitchell that. Because the recorded version it sounds fine to me. I'd probably have dug that if that's what it sounded like, but Oh, my God, it sounded so bad live. Alyssa had no idea that you would dislike the opener because she said they were so much like coin that if you like coin, you should like them. Yeah, but but I get her point. She was so shocked. But, but I get her point now that I hear them on Spotify instead of live. The live to me was just terrible. And I mean, I I truly believe that live shows are about a vibe. Mm-hmm. and you either pick the vibe up or you don't. Mm-hmm. And if you don't pick the vibe up, then you don't kind of enjoy that live show, and that's kind of what it was what they were for me. Out. I wasn't picking up the vibe, and that's because I'm going to tell you, I do pick up the vibe on the Spotify stuff. Really good. So that's why I was confused, because you know me. I go back, and I think it through, and I'll make adjustments, But I, and I've done that. But I don't still don't think it was very good. And yet the recorded version is it's banging. It's good. So I don't know. I wonder if you'd have enjoyed the recorded version more had you known what it was supposed to sound like when you went to the concert. You mean the live version more? No. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Because going to the concert's not going to help me like the recorded version more. Well, it might. (laughs) But yeah. You're, you're, you might be right. You might be right. Maybe that's what, ne- that's what was necessary, was to get myself addicted to the music before I got there. And well, yeah, because then... then you enjoy it because you know all the words and all that good stuff. Yeah. Or at least four of the words. Yeah, that's true. And with me, yeah, it's probably going to be more like four of the words. Yeah. Unless there's a really good, catchy song, in which case I would know every word. Yeah. Even the little nuances that are thrown in there. So, yeah, that's me. I am crazy as crazy can be are you done now yeah talking about your so concert tell us about tell us what happened with you because you also had fun 
with a different child. Well, Mitchell and I drove all the way to the forum. The Mitch. To see Lanny on Saturday night. Yeah, I like Lanny. Do you? I do. You kind of go back and forth on liking Lanny or not. Yeah. Um, you would like them more if you went to their concert, I think. They're one of those bands. Interesting. Because, you know, you know why I'm back and forth on that, though? It's just one, one reason. I keep getting directed to what's the best song, and I realized it when you said what you just said just now. That's the first time I've realized it. What I have to do with them is experience it my way. Go and listen on Spotify. They have their set list from the current tour as a playlist. All right. Those are the songs they think their fans want to hear most. Mixed with what they most want to play, yes. Right. So maybe that will give you the best version. Interesting. I, I will definitely do that because what I'm trying to say, though, is even that kind of thing is another person influencing me to, oh, go listen to this. Yours makes sense. Not arguing that at all. Mm -hmm. But I think at some point I need to, like, take a step back and just, like, experience their music as I experience their music. Well, that's why I I think that's why I made the suggestion of the set list, because you can experience their music. And in order that they wanted to present it to you, maybe you'll get the message from them. Yeah, that's a good. If you're going to get it, I think you'll get it there. That's why I said that despite not wanting to be influenced by someone else, and that is being influenced by you, your your reasoning makes a lot of sense. And your reasoning isn't like a, I'm going to convince you. It's more of a, this is how you're going to find out the truth. And I like that. That's a, who who wouldn't want the approach to reveal the truth? Right. So anyway, their concert was fun. There was lots of interesting people watching. Lots of interesting people watching. Um, both of their openers are pretty good, though I can't remember what either of their names are. And they were pretty fantastic. I mean, pre-going to Zed concert, I only liked maybe two or three of their songs. And I'd heard all of them because I listened to them when Mitchell said I should listen to them. I didn't love it. But then seeing him in concert, it's got some love now. That's interesting. So charismatic performer. Yeah. Well, and he took time in the middle of the show to thank every one of the band members and say why they were so important to him. And he took time during the show to thank all these other people who were important to him. I'll tell you what. I thought it was nice. I'll tell you what. All the way through the whole Purple Rain album, people were like, Prince, Prince, Prince. And I was like, meh. You know, Prince is just meh. Okay. And then, by some stroke of luck, uh, higher up in his record company took a liking to me and was like a customer of mine Mm -hmm. and gave me tickets to a Prince concert, like pretty up close. Right. And it was at the forum, like what you guys went, but then, and they didn't have the general admission in the middle. There were seats that you paid a lot of money for. Well, we were like third row back for Prince right there in seats. Well, I'm going to tell you what I had heard every one of those albums at least five times and was just like meh then i watched him perform the music and like you said out of his head came the order of the music and then you just kind of go oh that's who you are and you just I, i just saw him as a genius after that lanny has pretty chill vibes when you listen to their albums they're very mellow not anything Nothing like you too listen edgy. to at the gym. But he had so much energy for the entire show. And he was like, he air humped a clear glass piano at one point. <laughs> so I love it. That's funny. Yeah. No, it was, it was great. I liked it an awful lot. So, you know, I had a question. Okay. My question was that you said you had a question to ask me. That's not a question. That's a statement. So what is the question? No, I'm not done. So what is the question you need to ask me? There's a short story that goes before this question. Uh Uh-oh. Short story? Okay. Like less than 100 words. Buckle down, guys. Buckle down. She's going to read the short story. Hang on. 
Okay. So, this is not in my the asshole. Not in my the asshole post. However, you, I found it on the same place I get most of my am I the asshole posts from. Anyway. Okay. Here That's interesting. Here is this person's Twitter post. My son bought a book at Goodwill for 50 cents. He then discovered $500 tucked into the pages. Of course he's excited and wants to keep it. He's 30. I have no say in what he does. What would you do? Well, where did he get the book? He bought it at Goodwill for 50 cents. Okay. And some guess we're assuming that whoever donated the book tucked $500 in there and forgot. They, they tucked $500 in there for whatever reason they tucked it in there on yeah, purpose, and, forgot, whatever. But yeah. Okay, but yeah, for some reason we're assuming, though, from the tone of the question, because there's a tone to every question. Uh -huh. From the tone of the question, it's assuming that we, in order to be good people, the woman asking should, this attempt, question. should attempt, yeah. yes, should attempt to return the money. You know, she's making this assumption. Yeah. But here's the first thing that I say is, how many things did we donate to Goodwill where we gave them our name? How many? You and I? Yeah. I don't think we've ever given them our name. Exactly. And that's kind of my point. How in the hell are you going to find the person with the $500? So how in the hell are you going to find the $500? Well, as the shop person, if you're going to try to make the argument that that money belongs to them, well... They brought in stuff, and their job is to go through it and then price it based on what they see. So if they didn't take the time to go through it and find out that there was $500 in there, and then they put a ticket on it, they then created an offer to sell that to me for that price. And when I go to the cash register with it, that's my acceptance. That's a legally binding contract. You're done. Correct. And that's just facts, Jax. That's just how I see it. But I still, I can, I can kind of sense the argument of, you know, oh, well, Goodwill, should, you should donate that $500 to Goodwill. That's Goodwill's. Well, hold on a second. I mean, if I go and I find, uh, I don't even know anything about men's fashion well enough to know a high-end suit, but let's say the highest-end suit that you can buy. Okay. And I happen to find it at Goodwill for 25 cents. And it's like in brand new condition, tags still on it, never been worn. Am I supposed to say to them, Ho hold on a second. This suit right here is, you know, $57,000. So I know you only want 25 cents for it, but I'm going to have to pay you $57,000. Who does that? No one. Who does that? So, three perspectives were given by the people in the comments. Would you like them? There's three perspectives? Okay, let's three. hear those bad boys. The first perspective. Legally, it's his. It would be great if he would donate at least half of it, though. Okay, that's a perspective. I mean, it's a perspective. I'm going to say that I did not do any perspectives. I just did cut and dry black and white either. This happens bang or that happens bang. That's what I... Did. so that's where mine comes from if i was taking into perspective things there's probably some of these that i would agree with this perspective this next perspective is honestly it's the one that i agree with finders keepers you shouldn't have told me that before i mean you read it. <laughs> is this any different than buying a five dollar silver teapot at goodwill taking it to antiques roadshow and finding out it's a five thousand dollar victorian era victorian era antique I'd probably donate $200 for karma's sake, but wouldn't begrudge anyone from keeping it. That's exactly what I was trying to say with the expensive suit thing. Yeah. They, they screw up and price it 25 cents. That's on them, not me. My mom used to work at a thrift shop. And she didn't like to deal with the clothing at all. She liked to deal with the rummage. And sometimes she would... Well, like when she got later in her years, she couldn't stand there and go through the rummage so she would have them save all the jewelry and everything into a bin for her and she would price it check to make sure what quality it was she had her magnifying glass and everything to find out if it was a real gold chain <laughs> and package it all for them because she wanted to make sure that if it was a real gold diamond ring 
that she wasn't pricing it for a dollar. Right. And that's, and that's doing your due diligence. Right. And that's as the person selling it, that's that person's responsibility. My job as this consumer is to get the best possible deal I can find. And if I can happen to find a deal for a dollar, something that's worth $50,000, that's, you know what? Once, once the transaction happens, that's between me and the seller. It's not between anyone else. And yeah. I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to take advantage of that. So I think if that's the perspective you agree with, I think that's the perspective I kind of agree with too because that's why I made the point about the suit. That's 100% why. It's just to say, finders keepers, man. I got lucky and got a brand new suit for 25 cents. Yeah, buddy. What's the other? Now, that's one perspective. That One perspective was to split it 50-50. What's the third perspective? <laughs> I love the 50-50 one. That's, that's interesting. A sorry comment on the state of our public ethics. <sighs> the purchase was a contract. I'll give you a book, not plus 500 cash. Clearly a mistake. Don't take advantage of other people's mistakes. Not a hard concept. <sighs> I feel like AOC wrote this post. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, people, but you don't get to tell people what to be upset about and what not to be upset about and what level of upset to be. They get to do that on their own. And honestly, anything other than that is disingenuous. And for those of you who are a little slow, disingenuous, it means, you know, fake, not real. Okay. All right. So think about that. Rehearsed answers are disingenuous. Hint, fake, not real. Close hint. End of story. So that's, that's where I come from on that perspective. I think that perspective is laughable. I mean, if I, buy, if I buy a wallet at a secondhand store and it has a quarter in it, do I need to go ahead and return that quarter back to the secondhand store? Where do you draw the line? $20, $50? Here's the thing. $550. But, 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 like... but, but, but here's the thing. Okay. That same person who says that you should give that money to the Goodwill because it's theirs, they intended to give you a book, gets defeated by the reverse argument. Well, let's say he's going to say that if you found it as Goodwill, you found that $500, you can take that out of there and consider that a donation. Right. And then you can go and sell the book. And that's cool with him. And that's exactly what thing. those stores but do when they find money. Well, exactly. But here's the thing. Using his logic on him, that store should make an attempt to find out who donated the book. The book because they intended to donate a book, not a book plus $500 in cash. If I guarantee <laughs> you they did not intend to give away the 500 in cash. If you donated a handbag and... It was your it was your mother's handbag, and inadvertently a brooch that has like all the sentimental value in the universe was attached to it, and it's kind of cool looking. Do you expect Goodwill to find that brooch tucked in a hidden pocket in that purse and be like, "Oh no, this must be so important to him. I must track him down." And he'd be like, Whoa. he could be like, "That's just a cheap cheap piece of trash plastic. Get off my lawn, you stalker." Well, here's the thing. You don't expect them to, but if the dude's going to say that it belongs to the Goodwill because they intended to sell you a book, I'm going to push back even harder and say it really starts all in Goodwill's lap. They should have found the owner of the $500 and tried a little harder. They should have actually fucking advertised. Here you go. You, someone came and brought this in and there is something special on the inside. If that was you, let us know and describe what it is. And guess what? No one in hell except the person who did it is going to know that there was $500 in cash right. in that book. You so that person will call and now you can be like, oh, thank God. Here's your $500 back. You didn't intend to donate that. That's that guy's scenario. But yet he's okay with them not doing that. Yeah. I can't stand inconsistent people, people. So don't be inconsistent. So those are the three point those are the three points of view. Recap yes. what they were. Split it 50-50, right? Yes. But they also said legally it belongs to the, the son. 
So right. they but, are but they fully would hope aware. they would they would hope that they split it fifty fifty because it would be it would on it would be the nice thing to do be like I found some extra money in this book I wanted to come donate it to your charitable organization. It's a nice. You thing know what? To in do. reality, that's probably what I would do. Right. Now that I think about it, that's probably what I would do. But in saying what I would do, like I've said many many times, doesn't mean that's what you should do. But what I do think people should do is use the standard like this, simple standard. The second one was that finders keepers, losers weepers. Right, and that one I agree with. That's the one that I say you need to use the standard of. Well, because because it's not it's not fair to the person to be like, oh well, you should return it back to them because then I can turn it around on the person in the middle and say that you should go back and find it back to the other person. It's finders keepers. Right. If you, if you follow that rule, if you fo- let's show you how it's consistent. If you follow that rule. Bree brings something to you, your goodwill. She brings it to you. Well, two scenarios. You find it and you keep it, right? Nobody seems to have a problem with that. People see it done all the time, right? Right. Second scenario, you don't find it. I find it. Why do I have to be the one that gives it back to you when you didn't have to give it back to Bree? Right. That's not consistent. Consistent is... You decided to keep it from Bree. I get to keep it from you. It's that's consistent. And the last perspective was the nut job saying that um, <laughs> nut job. you signed a contract with Goodwill when you purchased the item and you have to give them their five hundred dollars back. <laughs> okay. The simplest argument against that though, like in reality, is where in the receipt does it say book plus five hundred parentheses parentheses no ex, no extra items are inside of book. Close parentheses. Right. Where does it say that? It doesn't right. say that. It it just says book. It doesn't mention anything about the inside. So you can't act as though they uh, intended to take the five hundred dollars away and didn't take it away. You can't do that because they did not. Had they intended that, they would have put in there minus anything else find in, found inside of the book that belongs to us. Correct. But then do that. So now that we've beat this to death, I think... Is it dead? I think it's pretty fantastic that you, on your own, on the spot, P.S. people, he did not hear this question before. I've been teasing him with it for like two weeks, actually. Yep. Um, on the spot, came up with all three of the viewpoints, except the crazy one. And I know yeah, you came up with but, that viewpoint, too. You just but, didn't say it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I did think of it, but it was crazy. So I was like, no, I'm dismissing the crazy people. Sorry, I just do. Right. Um, but no, it's, it's interesting because that's why I didn't think there were three perspectives. I thought there was only two right. because I took the crazy one and threw it out. I had no idea you were going to use the crazy one as one of the perspectives. But in all intents and purposes, it's a perspective, so it should be out there. Yep. It was. It's interesting, though. The final conclusion that we both came to was the same. Right. Maybe for slightly different reasons, but yeah. ultimately, that's what happens with us a lot. We come at yeah. things from a slightly different angle than the other person, and then kabam. Correct. Problem solved. Anyway. So, now that I've read the three perspectives of the internet, shared my perspective, mocked aggressively another perspective, and Mike shared all of his perspectives with us as well. My I schizophrenia. Think you have to tell me what with my schizophrenia. Yeah. Anyway, I think everybody listening should tell us what their perspective on it is, because I really want to know what the overall of society thinks is right in this situation. I'm not going to change how I feel about it, but that's what I want to know. <laughs> I might change how I feel. That's cool. You're allowed. You know, I have an open mind on things. So, believe it or not, I actually do. And then people will say to me, "Well, if if you would really, if you would really change your viewpoint, if someone gave you a good argument to change your viewpoint, why haven't you ever changed your viewpoint?" The answer is obvious. You you can't see the answer. No, I'm right. asking you why. You can't see the answer. Really, you can't see the answer. The answer is because no one's ever given me a good argument to make me change my viewpoint a simple answer right somehow because i haven't changed my viewpoint i'm stubborn 
and I'm stuck in my ways. No, you got to convince me, man. I don't just follow you like a sheep and go, bah, bah. You know, that was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. You got, the, you got that little echo going there. That was good. That little stutter. That was great. I like it. So you know what? You know what? This is making me tired. Well, on that sheeply note, good night, everyone. As the bye bye <laughs> sheeple. Thank you for listening to the nightly rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.